And talking about justice and just action, make China pay is work in progress. New strategies are being explored and new alliances are taking shape. Take the case of India and Australia. Australia was the first to demand an investigation into the Wuhan virus outbreak. In response, China slapped punitive tariffs. Australia did not budge. It got support from more than 100 countries, including India. India backed a motion at the World Health Assembly for an independent probe. In response, China came, became more aggressive in Ladakh, and we've been seeing that. So India and Australia are now working together. Two Asia-Pacific giants joining hands to counter Beijing. A digital summit was held between the two nations yesterday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Australia Scott Morrison met virtually. It was perhaps the first virtual summit of its kind. It reflected the determination of both sides to hold talks. There were significant outcomes. First, India and Australia have entered into a comprehensive strategic partnership. A wide-ranging declaration on maritime cooperation has been signed. It's a momentous decision and one probably aimed at countering Chinese bullying. Allow me to quote from the joint statement. India and Australia have common concerns regarding the strategic security and environmental challenges in the Indo-Pacific maritime domain. These include activities and actions that are inconsistent with international law. Inconsistent activities. As examples, the joint statement mentioned terrorism, poaching of marine species, drugs and arms smuggling and illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. Does this ring a bell? Then there's an arrangement for mutual logistic support. Cooperation in defense, in science and technology, and this is very important. A pact for sharing military logistics is important. It will give Indian warships and aircraft enhanced reach in the Pacific. Military assets of both countries can resupply, refuel at each other's bases. Vyond spoke to Australia's envoy to India, Mr. Barry O'Farrell, for more on this, and this is what he told us. Well, I think both India and Australia share a commitment to uh, internationalism. Both of us share uh, a view around uh, multilateralism and bilateralism and using international institutions to resolve issues. Now, uh, the Quad remains as important uh, uh, as ever. Uh, it's a great, it's proving itself a very useful venue, if I can put it that way, for uh, countries like India and Australia to coordinate our approaches to critical issues like uh, maritime and cyber security and counter-terrorism. And those issues haven't gone away. Regrettably, they're never going to completely go away. Australia is also following India's example when it comes to foreign investment. Remember, India tightened FDI rules to prevent hostile takeovers by Chinese firms. Now, the Scott Morrison government has also shaken up foreign investment laws for national security. It is the biggest shake-up, if reports are to be believed. Under this, all foreign investors will face greater scrutiny when bidding for sensitive assets. This will be regardless of the size of the deal or whether the buyer is private or state-owned. Compliance would also be tightened. The authorities plan on spending an additional $50 million only on the enforcement rules. What does all of this tell you? The China's belligerence at the border with India and its many diplomatic firestorms with Australia have only been a catalyst for India-Australia ties. Both countries may be miles apart, but they have united against a common threat.